also known as the Arab Warlord, and being one of Chechnya's most powerful rebel commanders, Shamil Basayev has earned a lot of notoriety in just 41 years of his whole life. During his time, he was a senior leader of the Chechen independence movement and an alleged international terrorist with ties to Osama bin Laden. And that's why he's remembered as Russia's bin Laden. Join us today as we'll be diving deep and discovering how this innocent guy became the senior leader of such a powerful syndicate in a very short period. Early Life Born in 1965, in the village of Dyeshnivedeno, in southeastern Chechnya, to Chechen parents from the Belgatoy Tiep, Shamil Basayev had some very old Russian ancestry. Chechen resistance to foreign occupation, notably Russian domination, is reported to have been a familial tradition for generations in his family. An ancestor fought against Timur in the 14th century. A great-great-great-grandfather served as Imam Shamil's deputy and died battling the Tsar and a great-grandfather died fighting the Bolsheviks in the early 20th century. Following the Russian Revolution, his grandpa fought in the endeavored attempt to establish a breakaway North Caucasian Emirate, which ultimately failed. On the instructions of the Soviet commander, Lavrenti Beria, Basayev, along with the majority of the Chechen people, were deported to Kazakhstan during World War II to cut off support for the Chechen insurrection that had taken place between 1940 and 1944 in the Republic. Only when Nikita Khrushchev revoked the deportation order in 1957 were they allowed to return to their home countries. Basayev, a passionate football player, graduated from high school in Dyeshnivedeno in 1982 at the age of 17 and then served in the Soviet military as a fireman for the following two years. Before relocating to Moscow, he spent the next most important four years working at the Askaisky State Farm in the Volgograd region of southern Russia, and that's where the story gets interesting. After failing in his effort to enroll in the law school at Moscow State University, he went on to study at the Moscow Engineering Institute of Land Management, where he graduated in 1987 with distinction. In the following years, he worked as a computer salesman in Moscow, where he collaborated with Supyan Taramov, a local Chechen businessman. But when life isn't getting you positive results, you always look for shortcuts or quick solutions. Unfortunately for Taramov and Basayev, they ended up on opposing sides in the Chechen wars, during which the latter sponsored a pro-Russian Chechen militia. But his interviews reveal that Taramov had recruited him as a favor for a family friend, and he had proven to be an ineffective worker. The Rise of Basayev it is alleged that Basayev joined supporters of Russian President Boris Yeltsin on the barricade surrounding the Russian White House in central Moscow, armed with hand grenades in August 1991, when some hardline members of the Soviet government endeavored to stage an overthrow of the Soviet government. A few months later, in November 1991, Zokhar Dudayev, the head of the Chechen nationalism movement, unilaterally announced the country's independence from the newly constituted Russian Federation. As a result, President Boris Yeltsin declared a state of emergency and ordered soldiers to the Chechen border region. At this point, Basayev began his long career as a rebel, attempting to attract public attention to the humanitarian situation in his own country. In November 1991, Basayev and his accomplice, Lamali Chachayev, as well as the group's leader, Saeed Ali Satuyev, hijacked an Aeroflot Tu-154 plane en route from Mineralnya Vodi in Russia to Ankara and threatened to blow up the plane unless a state of emergency was lifted. The hijacking was amicably settled in Turkey. The jet and passengers were permitted to safely return to their homes, and the hijackers were granted safe passage back to Chechnya. Why he's known as the Russian Bin Laden. Being a guerrilla leader, he rose to prominence as the mastermind behind a series of spectacular and terrible terrorist attacks. Then, during Russia's post-Soviet fight to curb Chechen calls for independence, he went from being a national liberation hero to becoming a pitiless fanatic with fundamentalist Islamic undertones, a transformation reflecting the breakdown of norms on both sides. The disappearance of regard for civilian life and human rights, both among Russian forces and among Chechen guerrillas, led to Basayev's ascension to the most dreaded and desperate of the warlords. He has spent almost eight years of his life on the run, only to re-emerge on recordings or in phone conversations to claim credit for heinous crimes against humanity. Although the Russian government referred to him as a Chechen version of Osama bin Laden, that was a label that had some merit, but it inflated the ideological reach of Basayev. The Chechen battle against Russian dominance only drew a small number of foreign soldiers because jihadis saw Russia as a far less significant danger to the Islamic world than the United States. 
Nonetheless, he was a follower of the stringent Wahhabi religion, which was also the inspiration for bin Laden. In the aftermath of Stalin's deportations in the 1950s, Basayev's father was one of the thousands of impoverished Chechens who were able to return to their ancestral country. Shamil was raised on tales of the two-century-old Chechen battle to maintain their culture under Russian authority, but he was also greatly influenced by Soviet history due to his upbringing. He had defined himself as an all-Soviet child who respected the role performed by Chechens in the struggle against the Nazi invasion of Russia during World War II. After surging as a conscript in the Red Army, he pursued a degree in land management in Moscow. He cited Abraham Lincoln, Giuseppe Garibaldi, and Che Guevara as his inspirations. Apart from that, Basayev has been involved in multiple conflicts, and we'll be discussing them one by one. Nagorno-Karabakh Conflict Upon his arrival in Azerbaijan in 1992, Basayev was influential in the country's ultimately futile battle against Armenian rebels in the enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh. He was claimed to have been in command of a Chechen group with battalion-sized numbers. Following the defeat of Shamil Basayev and Salman Radoyev in 1992, Azeri colonel Azar Rustamov stated that hundreds of Chechen volunteers offered us important assistance in these fights headed by Shamil Basayev and Salman Radoyev. Basayev was rumored to have been one of the last warriors to escape Shusha after the battle. Abkhaz-Georgian Conflict at the end of 1992, Vasayev traveled to the Georgian breakaway territory of Abkhazia. Vasayev commanded the Caucasus Mountain People's Confederation soldiers, a volunteer unit of Pan-Caucasian nationalists, people from the Caucasus. Their role in the Abkhazian war led to a military loss for the Georgian government in October 1993. The Russian government newspaper, Rossiskaya Gazeta, said that Vasayev was a GRU agent. Journalist Boris Kagarlitsky said that Shamil Basayev and his brother Shirvani are longtime GRU agents, whose actions were approved not by radical Islamists, but by generals in military intelligence offices. The attack by Basayev's detachments was allegedly planned in the summer of 1999, in a home in southern France, with Basayev and President Voloshin. Moreover, the explosives allegedly came from GRU depots near Moscow, not secret Chechen facilities. Since the Abkhaz were backed by Russia, Basayev got direct military instruction. Many Chechens who fought with the Russians in Abkhazia against Georgia had previously fought for Azerbaijan against Armenia in the first Nagorno-Karabakh war. So the Russians let Basayev fight the Georgians between Russia and Abkhazia. Basayev's role in wars even though he studied the fundamentals of Islamic thinking and became impacted by extremist concepts, Basayev's thoughts were constantly focused on the battlefield. In the summer of 1999, he orchestrated an incursion into the Dagestan highlands to establish an Islamic state in the region. Aslan Maskadov, the president of Chechnya, condemned the move. Still, Vladimir Putin, the new Russian prime minister, used it to justify a new invasion of Chechnya in response. Russo-Turkish soldiers captured Grozny in January 2000, causing Basayev to flee to the highlands to the south, where he was wounded in a minefield. From here, it is thought that he orchestrated several terrorist spectaculars, the deadliest of which was the takeover of a school in Beslan, North Ossetia, in September 2004. As at Budyonovsk, nine years earlier, 331 people, about half of whom were children, perished due to a failed Russian rescue operation. In October, Basayev claimed responsibility for an attack on police installations in the Republic of kabardino balkaria that resulted in the deaths of 139 people. Although he was not present, he claimed to have commanded the action. Death Basayev was assassinated on July 10, 2006, on the border of North Ossetia, in the town of Ekazevo Ingushetia, a republic bordering Chechnya. According to the Interior Ministry and the prosecutor of Ingushetia, a group of three cars, two Kamaz trucks, one pulling the other by a rope, and an unfinished estate on the outskirts of the village, gathered in the early hours of the morning of July 10th. According to a handful of witnesses, the guys were hauling boxes and changing them from one truck to another when a large explosion happened. The men were wearing black uniforms and came in and out of a forested area close to the estate, which goes all the way to the border with North Ossetia. Insurgents are reported to have utilized the half-constructed property, which had vacant new buildings, to receive and distribute massive weaponry supplies obtained from foreign countries. It is also thought that the most awaited part of the approaching cargo was contained within the Kamaz trucks, but because one of them broke down, the armament had to be shifted into the vehicles as soon as it was discovered. Basayev is presumed to have been the primary recipient of the weaponry, and as a result, to have been in control of their distribution. 
Basayev allegedly requested that a mine be placed on the ground for inspection. At the same time, the back tailgate of one of the vehicles was open, at which moment the mine supposedly exploded. The man died as a result of mine blast injuries, according to a forensic scientist from the Ossetian government who examined Basayev's remains. The explosive device had a lot of force behind it, and the victim was close to the epicenter. Most likely, the bomb was lying on the ground, and the victim was leaning over to pick it up. While Russian President Vladimir Putin declared Shamil Basayev's killing to be an act of fair vengeance, he also acknowledged that the death of Basayev would do little to quell the simmering ethnic hatred and unrest in the insurgent Russian region of Chechnya. Well, that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos in the future.